Okay, let's start. Uh, that today's lecture. Uh, today's lecture is about the uh, feature extraction. So, uh, before moving to the uh, actual contents, uh, the as usual, I have some kind of a logistics information. So, first next week, uh, I will go to interspeech. Next week is the uh, the interspeech period. Uh, but the uh we are planning uh, this absence and actually uh they are making uh, uh several uh very kind of uh the hands-on uh the tutorials uh for you guys uh and uh, monday uh we will have a, a basic usage of espnet uh making a recipe and the benchmark and so on and the wednesday that how to make a new task uh so uh this will be a very good starting point uh of your course and project so i definitely really recommend you guys to join uh these uh the two uh, tutorials uh that are done by tas in the next week at the same time and actually the participation points uh in during these tutorials are very high so uh mm -hmm. the, the i think you right should uh the, attend and get some points and since this is a speech course, so I believe some of them here may also join interspeech. And then other, uh, uh, due to this kind of a reason to uh, uh, lose this uh, the, uh, large points a little bit kind of a uh, um, uh, little bit uh, the difficult. Uh, so I'd like to have some exceptions for people uh, the attending the interspeech uh, this week. Uh, in person, uh, the, I will do some uh, adjustments. So please let me know if you guys uh, will go to interspeech in person. Okay, so the next uh, the, is the uh, project that the, the, uh, the I want to introduce uh, with you guys. So actually, uh, the, we are now thinking of uh, developing the Jack uh, based um, speech recognition systems. Uh, and the benefit is actually quite large. Uh, the compatibility with NumPy uh, and the smooth uh, the scalability of TPU, GPU, CPU, uh, and possibly faster than PyTorch with the uh, compilation, uh, reproducibility, uh, the and also many companies are now actually uh, the switching from the PyTorch or TensorFlow to the JAX. So I am really kind of interested in this direction. So if you guys are interested in this kind of activities, uh, the please uh, the let us know. Uh, this can be very kind of a require intensive code, uh, coding experience and so on. It's uh, the, the more like a quite a large scale uh, the software development, uh, but with that uh, we could actually uh, follow uh, the, some of the uh, latest technologies and the state of the art uh, the, uh, implementations and so on. So again, uh, if you guys are interested in this uh, development, uh, please let me know. Okay, so uh, that's the, the uh, mostly about uh, logistics, and I will uh, the move to the uh, today's agenda, uh, which is a feature extraction and the further processing in feature extraction. So as usual, I try to kind of uh, depict uh, this uh, uh, block diagram uh, in the beginning uh, of this lecture. Uh, this today's other part is feature extraction. Um, and the this part is actually uh, that we are not touching so much. And uh, I will try to explain the, some of the important components of the feature extraction in this uh, lecture. However, uh, similar to the other machine learning problems, uh, feature extraction uh, pre processing is a little bit engineering and uh, uh, quite empirical, I would say. Um, this uh, the, the, uh, the speech feature extraction is actually uh, the quite uh, the co have to consider the various uh, the aspects 
uh, including, of course, performance, but the computational complexity, since this is pre-processing. So if it takes a long time, it is not useful, right? And the speech recognition, uh, it should be online. So the speech extraction should also be online. Bug overs and so on cannot be uh, the easily used. Uh, and also, the, uh, this is the one of the first block of the rest of the other block. So this feature extraction also consider many uh, dependency of the data blocks. So due to this constraint, uh, uh, the feature extraction is again very empirical. And in general, I could not have an answer uh, of some of the question, why we use MCC, why we use uh, the, the many filter bank. I could not have a single answer, but I have, for example, due to the performance perspective, due to the complexity perspective, due to the online perspective, due to the compatibility perspective, I can discuss about this. And then the, uh, the but the, in general, feature extraction is uh, the, like that. And the feature extraction itself, uh, the in speech recognition is actually quite complicated, I would say. And then the each, Processing has some theory, definitely has some very uh, beautiful theory. However, the combination of the feature uh, the extraction pipeline to become current um, uh, logomer filter bank and so on, it doesn't have a uh, the, uh, the grand theory to justify why this kind of feature extraction uh, is good and uh, the, the so on. So again, uh, this is uh, the, a little bit difficult for me to uh, explain the, the simple answer of why uh, we use this technique and so on. But again, this is a, a quite empirical and engineering development we are the finally process. But uh, not only for the uh, signal processing, we also using the, the, the auditory, uh, the, uh, the knowledge uh, the, uh, for the signal, uh, the, the uh, feature extraction and so on. And then the, I believe uh, some people here may have a good background in the EC side. And some people here is in the CS side or other uh, department, and they may not fully, uh, the, uh, may not have full uh, the, uh, knowledge about signal processing. So in this lecture, I also try not to uh, the deeply uh, dive into the uh, signal processing theory, but try to uh, the explain about each block with some figure and so on. And I try to give you some intuition uh, of the each block. Uh, the, that is kind of um, aim uh, of this uh, the lecture. So sometimes I, for example, skip the theory or even kind of uh, due to the simple explanation, I kind of uh, the, the, uh, omit a very strict signal processing theory. But this is just for the explanation about uh, the, uh, this purpose of the lecture. And uh, basically, uh, this is uh, the uh, I will basically just uh, the providing the basic operation. And uh, this is actually mostly covered the, also in the uh, coding assignment one. So together with uh, coding assignment one and this uh, the lecture, I hope you guys can somehow understand uh, the, uh, the uh, picture uh, of future, uh, feature extraction. Uh, that is again the aim of this uh, the today's lecture. So the first, uh, the, the, I will move to the, uh, the uh, discussion about the web form versus feature extraction. And the, yeah, I want to ask you, you some questions. It's actually both two. And the left is the web form I just extracted. And then right side is uh, the MSCC uh, feature. And the, yeah, the, which one do you think is more informative. Which one do you think has more pattern uh, for us to understand the signal? <laughs> none of them, good. Yeah, actually none of them is a good question. But if we know some knowledge, actually I could say that the right side is better. Uh, it has a bit more uh, the harmony structure. So I could say that actually this part is boiled. And uh, I'm not very sure that this part is uh, consonant and so on. But from this one, I actually couldn't say which one is boiled and so on. Anyway, many people actually, uh, the, after uh, they trained, they are trained, they could somehow read a spectrogram. 
So this, uh, and I have never heard that from the waveform to read something, but spectrogram people actually can read uh, what people are saying. So this uh, implies that uh, feature extraction is at least good for us, good for computer, uh, the, the, the human, and actually it's also good for computer. So this is a kind of uh, the goal of uh, the today's lecture from this waveform to a little bit more informative uh, the, the, uh, information. Okay, so uh, the, the first uh, talk about uh, what is a speech uh, waveform. Uh, this is uh, actually converting the sound pressure uh, into a time series information. And usually just a one dimensional uh, waveform. And mostly in this lecture, I actually using the monorail uh, signal, just a single channel uh, signal. However, please note that, that many of recent recording devices also supporting the, uh, the, the stereo. And also some of the smart speakers actually have a more microphones than two. Like for example, uh, the Alexa, uh, the basic Alexa uh, has the seven uh, microphone uh, and so on. And then let's uh, the, the dive into the, uh, this uh, one-dimensional waveform. But this is completely continuous information. And the, uh, we need to uh, the, uh, the process it for computer to understand uh, this information. And the first thing we do is discre discretize the waveform in the both time domain and the amplitude domain. And the time domain discretization, we call it sampling. And the, uh, the, uh, the amplitude uh, domain uh, discretization, uh, we call it quantization. And the waveform is mostly uh, the, uh, represented by these two uh, the information, a uh, sampling rate uh, and the quantization. Uh, so some of you that uh, it is very uh, the obvious, but this is actually one of the biggest uh, questions or uh, the, 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 uh, the, the uh, uh, bug uh, people are facing on. So I just want to uh, make sure. Uh, because generally, uh, people using a 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz, it's quite actually large. Many of the uh, your kind of uh, the music or some other uh, recording devices are actually based on this kind of a sampling rate. But for speech application, we actually don't need a, such kind of high uh, the frequency information. So we actually uh, reduce it to 16 kilohertz. Uh, this uh, the deduction is called down sampling. And uh, mostly we use a 16 kilohertz uh, the, uh, the audio information, but actually in our uh, the, uh, the many conversation, we actually also using the eight kilohertz uh, sampling rate because many of the telephone are the, are the uh, telephone speech uh, that is actually based on the eight kilohertz. We can use it, but the high uh, the frequency information actually also has some information. So actually, uh, the, even we can make it lower, but definitely uh, the higher is better. This is again a bit more like our, uh, the engineering side. Uh. 44.1 or 48 is a little bit too large and too redundant. And uh, I know that eight kilohertz is actually uh, the, the, uh, uh, reducing the intelligibility slightly and the speech recognition performance is also degraded from 16 kilohertz to eight kilohertz. But we usually using a uh, this range. Um, and the quantization is usually 16 bit, but it depends on the, uh, the, uh, the application. Some cases 14 bit uh, and so on. But generally, uh, please remember that most of our cases are the 16 kilohertz sampling, uh, 16 bit. So 16 is a kind of uh, the keyword uh, for uh, the both the, the time and the uh, amplitude uh, the resolution. And there are a lot of uh, the format uh, in speech, our uh, audio itself. 
uh, but the uh, the mostly uh, the the uh, we use work format uh, or MP3 or FLAC and so on. And this kind of a format usually have a header information, and uh, we could actually get the information of the sampling rate and the quantization. <laughs> By the way, this means that some of the audio files, very low audio file, actually doesn't have this information. <laughs> So uh, it is not easy to get the, uh, the correct sampling and, uh, and the quantization uh, in this kind of data. So anyway, uh, this uh, sampling data is quite important. So if you, for example, uh, the first start to touch the new data, I recommend you to actually check uh, whether this uh, the, the, the audio, uh, the, the fit sampling grade uh, the, the, this uh, audio data uh, has, uh, because this is very, very uh, the, the important uh, the, uh, for our uh, data processing. And then in uh, the, uh, our lecture, I actually asking you guys to also use SOX. How many people uh, the, have ever used SOX? Actually, not so much, okay. Yeah, maybe yes, maybe yes, yeah. Um, maybe we have uh, other good tools than SOC. Uh, but SOC is good in terms of it's actually a uh, the, the, the command line processing. So uh, this uh, the, the processing, like a SOC, uh, we can actually get the information of the sampling rate. Well, we even we can adjust the sampling rate uh, based on some command. Uh, and I believe the other audio tool can also support in this kind of thing. However, SOX uh, is at the command line and we can easily, how to say, uh, the, uh, make uh, the, the uh, program, uh, the, uh, the batch, uh, batch file, uh, and make the, uh, the program very uh, the efficiently uh, the processing. So if we just you know, check uh, one, or few, one or few samples of the audio, Probably you guys can use some kind of a, uh, uh, the, uh, some tools like a GUI uh, based uh, the, the uh, audio tools and so on. Uh, but uh, the, we need to process, like for example, 10,000 or uh, the 100,000 of the web file uh, and so on. So in this case, SOX is very uh, the, the, uh, the important tool. So I would like you to uh, actually play with uh, this. Uh, the uh, tools. And this is actually one of the um, homework, uh, today's weekly homework, uh, using SOX. Yes. Uh, in general, yes, uh, if you use a system bit, but uh, we should be uh, the careful about the uh, the amplitude uh, the, uh, becomes uh, the, the, the too large, and then the, the, it cannot capture uh, the, the, the amplitude information. So this is actually, we should be careful about it. But basically amplitude, uh, just having some uh, the, the, uh, quantization, and then it is not so difficult. Uh, the, for me, the more uh, the important information is again sampling. So, so uh, in the again in the homework, we use a SOX. Ask you guys to use a SOX and then uh, the play with some uh, the, um, sampling rate. And the, I just want to uh, the, the emphasize again uh, that this is the, the most frequent question. Uh, in the course and project and so on. Uh, the people start to use some of their new data uh, and so on, and throw it to the, some of uh, the, the speech equation toolkit or whatever. And they claim that it's not working at all. And the most cases actually, it just comes from the sampling rate mismatch. So uh, the, please check sampling rate uh, always. And many actually uh, the, the toolkit, even our toolkit, ESPNet, actually assuming the sampling rate, or we have to actually uh, the, the set uh, the, 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 the option to change the default sampling rate if you guys use using the, a different one. 
Okay, so after this kind of processing, we can now uh, the, uh, read waveform to the computer in the digital form. So now uh, we move to the, uh, the how to kind of uh, the process uh, this uh, the, the, uh, the feature extraction. And as I mentioned, the feature extraction, I just making it as a one block, but it's actually not one block. It can be a very large block. Uh, in this uh, lecture, I will mostly explain this one, two, three, four, five block. But actually, this five block can also be depending on the way of uh, the def uh, defining the block. Uh, in uh, the, the coding assignment, we actually have a, a pre emphasis, uh, which I kind of skipped the explanation. This is an additional block. And STFT also can be decomposed as a framing part uh, and the actual STFT operation uh, and so on. Actually, this uh, part, uh, uh, depending on the definition, but it can be very long, uh, the, uh, very long uh, the processing. And just uh, the showing that uh, uh, the how this kind of information will be converted. First, a short-term Fourier transform uh, the, is converting the uh, one-dimensional uh, waveform to the uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, some uh, dimension uh, some dimensional uh, the complex number. And then later it's uh, converted to the uh, uh, power strum. And we also performing the mirror filtering and finally taking the uh, log operation. And depending on our application, we further process the uh, discrete uh, cosine transform and so on. And actually the, uh, the, uh, the, this each conversion uh, the looks like that. So again, first uh, the, the, this uh, the is a waveform, right? Maybe I can break that. Okay, this is a waveform. And the first are the Fourier transform are uh, converting this information to the, uh, the complex number. So just put the real and the imaginary component uh, of this uh, number. And then after that, uh, we also performing the power operation and then uh, mail filtering is performed. Uh, this one. And then finally taking the log, actually the energy region uh, of the, uh, these kind of values are very peaky. So just checking this, uh, uh, the, the, uh, visualize this uh, the information, we cannot still find the, the uh, pattern. There are some pattern here, but the other pattern we cannot check it, right? So log uh, is very important operation to uh, the, uh, make the peak information to be more uh, the, the informative information. And the uh, last part, uh, uh, the, we also use, sometimes using a, a, dis, uh, a discrete cosine uh, transform, but for, in this lecture, I skipped this uh, the, the, the process. Uh, this is very important for the Gaussian, but it's not so important for the neural network. Okay, let's first move to the short-term uh, the Fourier transform. So Fourier transformation itself is extracting the uh, periodic component from signal. And the uh, speech information is actually quite periodic because it comes from the, uh, our kind of our informations uh, of the, for example, vibration uh, in our body, uh, mouth shape and so on. And this uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, vibration uh, we want to capture and then converting it to the more informative information, uh, informative feature. And usually uh, we have uh, some periodic signal in the 10 to 100 millisecond. So, this are the usually corresponding to the phoneme. So we try to kind of capture uh, this information uh, with Fourier transform. 
And uh, however, this uh, the Fourier transformation uh, should be applied to the small, uh, short region, short time region, like a 10 to 10, uh, 100 milliseconds. So this uh, process is called short time uh, Fourier transform. Fourier transform itself is sometimes applied for the entire dimensions, right? But this is actually uh, the, the, the try to capture the, uh, the periodic information in the uh, sun local region. Okay, so I put some mass. Uh, say we have a waveform, uh, this kind of a waveform. And then the, the Fourier transform is actually uh, the, applying this kind of operation. This is a waveform. And then W, this one is a window function that I will explain later. And this one is the, the periodic other function. And the, uh, uh, the, the important part uh, is uh, the to uh, make this kind of SDFT equation uh, to be tractable. And then uh, the, this one is already given. And it, uh, that we have to provide uh, this uh, the window function. For the window function, uh, we usually using the Hunning window, uh, which is uh, listed here. But it can be anything that actually having a property of making the edge of the path zero, so that we only focus on the short time. And this other uh, window function, important uh, the part is the window size. This uh, gets the, uh, the defined information of the region uh, we uh, the focus on. And also shifting information, after we have a windowing process, we actually make it uh, shifted for uh, some period. So this other uh, the, uh, the window information and the shift information is basically hyperparameter. But in addition to this hyperparameter, window shape like hanging, humming, or whatever is also, by the way, another hyperparameter. And then after uh, we get the, uh, the Fourier transform, we actually get the complex number. However, empirically, we know that we don't have to deal with this uh, the, uh, the, uh, complex number we actually uh, require uh, magnitude information to uh, make, uh, to understand the speech uh, so that we actually discard the uh, phase information and only taking the power. So this is a, uh, the short time uh, Fourier transformation. And then I will try to connect this kind of equation with some other uh, the similar operation. For example, uh, this is the ST of the operation that I listed here uh, previously, uh, this one. Uh, what do you think? This operation is very similar to the convolution, right? I am assuming that some people are very good at uh, deep learning. <laughs> And some people are very good at signal processing and try to kind of satisfy both the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, backgrounds. But anyway, people know the convolution, uh, the convolution of neural network and so on. Uh, this operation is quite similar to the uh, 1D convolution, 1D CNN. However, the difference is that this W and the exponential, this is actually fixed. It's not runnable. So uh, the, in this sense, STFT operation and the 1D convolution operation has uh, some similarity. And actually it is quite natural that uh, some people actually try to replace this convolution operation uh, with 1D convolution. And there are a lot of studies about it. And one of them, uh, the, I think I will list in the uh, reference. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, 
Um, there are such kind of a study and so on. But anyway, the issue of the just feeding the very uh, one dimensional uh, the waveform to the neural network is that it is too long. Sorry, it is too long. So many people actually using some framing to, for example, uh, the, the consider 400 uh, the, the samples and then performing the CNN in parallel. This is parallel processing, right? And then we get the feature. And so this is very similar to, by the way, STFT operation. So this kind of process is required. For example, again, the other one dimensional waveform, just you know, throw it to the self attention. Probably it is very difficult to uh, make it because only one second of the sample uh, correspond to have a 16,000 uh, the, the, uh, samples. Uh, times 16,000 if we use the, uh, the self attention, right? And even BLSTM, uh, the, the uh, LSTM, uh, the, uh, operating sample by sample is very kind of inefficient. So people using actually quite similar to some framing technique to uh, extract some other uh, portion of the uh, data sample and the parallelize, uh, the parallel processing is happened, yeah. Okay, um, and I will also a bit talk about more about the window size and the shift because this is very important information. Again, uh, the window size is uh, try to capture the periodic information. And this is actually parameter, hyperparameter. And the people using a 40 millisecond or 25 millisecond or some other uh, 32 millisecond, uh, depending on the application. And the uh, window shift is also important. Uh, the, after uh, the window uh, shifting, we can actually uh, the, uh, get the information uh, the, for uh, the each uh, the, uh, the data point. And we call this kind of process frame. So I often use uh, one feature extraction. Uh, I often call one feature extraction information as a frame. Uh, this is comes from this uh, the the the, uh, the uh, short term Fourier transform uh, the framing uh, the, the the operation uh, and so on. So this uh, number of frames uh, corresponding to the uh, the the amount of data uh, in uh, the speech recognition uh, the, in most cases. And again, I try to connect it to the uh, deep neural network uh, operation again people are more familiar with that one than the signal processing. If we try to uh, the, apply the convolutional neural network to some one-dimensional information, we usually have to specify several uh, the parameters, right? One of the important part is the kernel size, which is quite similar to the, uh, the window size, I would say. And then after that, uh, the, the, we often actually scan uh, by uh, striding the, opera uh, the, the, the operation, which actually corresponding to uh, the downsampling, the uh, output. And this is corresponding to the shift. So again, the, the Fourier transform can also be uh, the implemented by using the, uh, the convolutional neural network operation. Okay, so now I, I uh, want to explain also having some kind of short quiz about it. Actually, this uh, the window size, window shift, uh, we all could, yes. Yes, uh, without overlap, we lose the information. So we usually actually uh, have to have an overlap. And the uh, the if uh, the the, the uh, we use this kind of window size and the window shift, uh, we often use the unit uh, millisecond uh, or points. And actually, interestingly, speech recognition people often use uh, the millisecond, and the audio processing people are uh, the purely uh, the performing the audio processing, sound processing, music processing. They actually often use points. It's more like a convention, I would say. And actually, uh, this conversion depends on the number of the, uh, the, the uh, sampling rate. 
for example, 25 millisecond windows uh, the corresponding to the 400 point in the 16 kilohertz sampling cases. Uh, this is the, the, the calculation. Um, 16 kilohertz sampling means that the, the, uh, uh, the 16,000 uh, samples per second, right? This means that 16 points per millisecond. And then that we have using a 25 millisecond. So 16 times 25 becomes 400 points. So if we know the sampling rate, we can actually make this conversion, right? And again, the, the, the some audio people actually using the point. They said, you know, 512 uh, point window, which we can also convert uh, to the millisecond. And this conversion is actually changing when we use the uh, eight kilohertz sampling case. 25 millisecond windows case, uh, it uh, becomes uh, 200 points. And then the, uh, the short answer, uh, 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 short quiz one uh, is uh, the five 12, uh, five 12 points uh, window with corresponding to how many millisecond. Um, can you add it? If you follow this equation, you can actually uh, compute it easily. Okay, now we have a 42 boards and the, I think we can have just one more minute. Okay, let's check the uh, voting uh, result. Actually, the answer is forty six uh, millisecond. So uh, the, please be careful about this conversion, uh, number of the point and the millisecond would be changed if we using the, uh, the different sampling rate. And uh, I will have a second question. Actually this frame shift becomes the unit uh, of the feature. And this uh, becomes the, uh, the, the basic unit when we are, are the co computing the number of uh, the samples uh, the in our program. 
So let's say, for example, in the 10 millisecond frame shift case, this is very usual speech recognition system. If our uh, the, uh, the speech utilance is two seconds, and then the, the number of samples would be uh, 2,000 divided by 10. So it uh, the, uh, the goes to 200. So two seconds is a kind of a usual, a uh, little bit shorter sentence. It's actually corresponding to the 200 uh, length of the features. So, so please uh, kind of uh, uh, the, the, uh, the understand this kind of uh, uh, the, the intuition. One second, 100 frames. And the uh, one second, uh, the 100 frames. And the, the one minute corresponding to <laughs> large. <laughs> okay, the, uh, the second uh, the short crease, uh, the please uh, the opening. One more minute. Okay, uh, we can close the poll. I'm glad to see that everyone was correct. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I also try to calculate uh, one hour, 10 millisecond, uh, how many, <laughs> by using the calculator. Um, one hour, 16 times 16 times 100. So one hour would be 360K samples, right? Only one hour is 360K. And uh, we usually are uh, using the 100,000 hours of data to train the speech recognition. So this means that times 100. 36 million, right? Um, this is our usual scale. So this is the reason that we actually need an intensive computation uh, and the parallelization and for so on for speech processing. Only hundred hours of the data requires this kind of uh, the 
uh, processing. And in the industry, people using the uh, 10,000. So which means that we have our and 3.6 billion. Yeah, it's very large, right? But this is again our usual scale. Okay. Okay, uh, so um, I talked about the uh, STFT, and then now uh, the uh, our kind of future extraction, uh, the, the pipeline goes to the power. But as I mentioned, uh, power is not visible. <laughs> power is not visible. So uh, the usually we take the load. It's it's very interesting for us. Uh, the, uh, the when we uh, the, the the how to say uh, the uh, the visualize this information or even for the speech uh, the the uh, the speech ex extraction itself uh, logarithmic operation is important. <laughs> so. Uh, this is very kind of interesting uh, information. Well, due to the nature of the Fourier transform waveform, the energy becomes peaky. In that sense, it can be kind of uh, the natural, but I'm very interesting that the, uh, the visualization and the, uh, the feature extraction in the audio uh, requires the same log uh, the, uh, operation. And after we take the log operation, uh, of the power, we started to see some patterns here. And actually we want to emphasize uh, this uh, power in the low frequency component. Uh, so to emphasize this low frequency component, uh, uh, we use the mail filter bank. And uh, actually uh, the mail filter bank comes from some perceptual uh, study, uh, even human, not only, you know, when I busy, uh, the, the see this kind of uh, the visualization, uh, the, we want to check more for this low resolution. It's actually auditory people also uh, that want to get the information from the low frequency. So actually uh, this uh, the either a conversion of the uh, linear scale uh, of the, uh, the spectrum information to the mail uh, the information by using this number. By the way, uh, the, I am actually not good at explaining this number, not only because this is perceptual uh, the field, so they actually empirically found this kind of work, but because actually many people are using a very different function something similar to this one, but the, the quite different log function, uh, the, this uh, the nonlinear function uh, people are using. Uh, for example, uh, the, I kind of uh, uh, prepare uh, two implementation in the famous deep rotor uh, operation. They actually have uh, two <laughs> ways of computing the mail. So it's, it's actually uh, the, the, uh, the one way. And uh, I also often see that, I think this is comes from the mistake people using the, uh, the, uh, the, using the different base, like E as the base for this one, which is, I say, mistake. Uh, but the, I see, I often see this, that this kind of uh, the difference. So anyway, this kind of log function is used to uh, the, um, uh, the make a kind of nonlinear uh, information and emphasizing the, uh, the, uh, the uh, frequency information. So first we kind of draw this other function. Uh, F is a kind of a normal uh, the, the, uh, the spectrogram, uh, the frequency, and the mail is a kind of a frequency that uh, the perceptually human prefers. And writing it, and we usually uh, pick up the max. We don't need a, a very high uh, the frequency information and very low uh, frequency information. And then, 
uh, since uh, the, we want to convert this information to the mail information, uh, we actually using the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, we actually uh, the, the the using the uh, how to say uh, the uniform uh, the the uh, uniform bin uh, for the uh, the mail uh, the uh, the uh, axis, not in the uh, the uh, health x axis, and then picking up the point. This is a kind of a, again uh, the the human uh, prefers to. Uh, the, the listen. And as you can see that this part then and the high resolution is sparse, right? However, just picking up this uh, the frequency being information uh, means that we kind of discard many other information here, right? Instead, we're using a triangle filter to uh, take the weighted sum of this other uh, filter information and then making this other uh, the male feature. Uh, that is uh, the, the middle filter bank uh, the operation. And this uh, the operation sounds a little bit complicated, uh, uh, but it's actually written by the simple uh, matrix operation. And the coding assignment is also starting from the, this uh, matrix is given, right? So um, <laughs> it would be great if you guys also understand it and implementing this part, but this part is actually complicated. So uh, you guys can starting from just uh, the, the uh, matrix operation. And I kind of taking uh, this uh, the matrix uh, there. And as you can see that in the low frequency region, it's almost diagonal. So which means that we just passing the information uh, of the, uh, the original frequency of the features. And in the high frequency region, it's not diagonal anymore. And then uh, we actually, uh, the smearing the information comes from the uh, various features and then getting the, uh, the, the uh, estimating the, uh, the uh, mail uh, the filter bank and so on. And the, uh, this is, by the way, performed by the uh, power spectrum, not the, the, the take after the log. I mentioned that I take the log here, but this is just for the visualization. For the actual uh, the, uh, log mail filter bank operation, log will be taken after we are uh, performing this uh, the, uh, mail matrix operation. So please do not confuse. But the log is always good to, how to say, visualize uh, what it is. And when I kind of uh, the thinking about this uh, mail filtering, I actually came up with either one interesting idea. Uh, probably we can make this uh, the Triangle operation uh, to be uh, the neural net uh, written as a neural network. It's in general actually very difficult, by the way, to uh, the make this triangle uh, the operation. But I feel like we can uh, the replace some operation uh, with a differentiable operation uh, and the making the some uh, the how to say uh, the uh, data driven. Uh, the mail processing uh, we may make. And then the, the, it will be cool if, you know, a data-driven manner to, uh, for example, making the, this function to be learnable. And after that, we learn the model. If we, you know, get the something similar to this number from the data-driven method, it might be go cool. So I just came up with this kind of idea. Uh, by the way, uh, the many people actually do not touch this part as a differentiable operation, but many people are touching uh, this mail matrix. Uh, try to make mail matrix to be runnable. That actually, there are a lot of research. But I don't know so much about uh, the research of making this, uh, the, this part of the operation uh, would also be uh, uh, the, the uh, differentiable uh, neural network uh, based approach. So if you guys are interested in this direction, Maybe you guys can also think about it as a constant project. Although I don't uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, guarantee that you guys can get some result. It sounds like very difficult, yeah. Okay, so uh, this is a kind of uh, the, 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 the basic operation. And after we get the, uh, the, uh, the mail uh, operation uh, from here to here, you guys first could see more emphasized information 
uh, the, in the low frequency pattern. And also, you guys can also see that the many of uh, actually uh, the dimensions are actually uh, the, uh, the reduced. Originally, this is uh, 513, uh, it becomes 80. So, uh, people also call mail filter bank is important uh, for in terms of the dimension reduction, dimensional reduction, not only for kind of perceptual uh, the, 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 the approaches. So this actually has a lot of uh, discussions about it. And I see that uh, every time I explain, I had a lot of questions. So I will actually summarize some of my kind of uh, the, the notes about it in the following sections. But anyway, this uh, log mail filter bank is our kind of a usual uh, speech feature. OK, so the, let's go through the several kind of nodes. First frequent question, uh, can we really discuss the phase information? It should be important, right? Um, yes and no. Uh, perceptually, actually, it's not very important. We already had this kind of uh, other study. Uh, and so on. And the speech recognition experiment also supporting that phase information is not important. However, it is uh, the different story. When we use the multi-channel information, and then from the phase difference, we can actually localize the information. So this, this is why human has a two years. Uh, we can actually uh, localize, you know, it's not very perfect, but you know, uh, we can uh, understand where the sound comes, right? It's mostly using the uh, the phase or level information, but anyway, uh, the uh, phase information is uh, the not important for pure speech recognition. But if we consider multi-channel speech uh, the recognition, it is important. And the second frequent question: Can we use the other scales than MEL? There are a lot of studies of this kind of nonlinearity, and the, the bark and the other measures are also widely used. Uh, the, in the, uh, the perceptual studies. And actually there are a lot of uh, the, the speech recognition uh, the studies about replacing the male information to the others. But the conclusion is that mix, sometimes better, sometimes not. And the people actually uh, decide that the male is okay. And the, uh, the third uh, the question, not question, but the, the third uh, the note uh, feature extraction has a lot of, lot of hyperparameters. Window size, window shift, and uh, window type, whether, you know, hunting or humming or whatever. And I didn't talk about it, but the zero padding and so on is also uh, the, the, the important. Uh, and the number of bins uh, the, the, and the mail function also has uh, several, uh, the, the, uh, the, um, uh, several ways, uh, and they so on. Uh, there are a lot of, lot of other hyperparameters. And also I skipped some of the, uh, the, the detail, but as you can imagine that the, the, uh, the windowing, uh, the, the approaches usually have some issues in the other uh, edge. And then the, we use the padding to make the input to be the same length, or you know, we just discard the edge of the part and so on. Also, the uh, mail filtering part, uh, again, I skipped the detailed information, but to make a triangle uh, filter, we actually have to uh, perform the rounding, <laughs> uh, the, the processing and so on. And rounding is also uh, the depending on, you know, just using a rounding or discarding. Uh, flooring and so on. There are a lot of ways to do it. So in general, uh, the feature extraction is a combined combination of these hyperparameters. And it is very difficult to exactly uh, getting the same uh, the, the feature extraction uh, result uh, than the, the other people's uh, the, uh, the feature extraction. But fortu fortunately, uh, mostly this kind of small parameter change would not uh, the, the affect the performance. So that you can safely using this uh, the, the hyperparameter that, uh, that we have discovered. But uh, yeah, this is actually one question. Window size, window shift, and uh, all other parameters are mostly optimized uh, when uh, we use the Gaussian mixture model before the deep neural network. 
And after this deep neural network, I know that some people actually try to optimize, uh, which uh, may actually affect uh, the, the, some of the other uh, hyperparameters. And now we also move to the end-to-end -end neural network. So probably good to revisiting these uh, the hyperparameters that can be more optimal for the end-to-end -end system. Uh, that is actually uh, one of the, uh, the uh, interesting uh, research uh, the topic, I will say. And if you guys are interested in this kind of problem, you guys can also uh, propose each other a uh, course and project. And the final question, a uh, final kind of uh, remark. Uh, this is also often people are uh, asking, uh, the male filter is actually uh, try to uh, uh, imitate the, uh, the uh, to recognize the, uh, the uh, the human conversation, uh, the in, we call it intelligibility, and the which is uh, more, almost like equal to recognizing the word and so on. And as you can see, as you imagine, if we try to recognize the word and so on, actually speaker information and so on are not necessary. But it's actually what we want to normalize, right? Uh, this is not important information. If we try to um, uh, recognize, uh, there are some words and so on. And then some people actually claim that the male filter bank was designed for this intelligibility. Uh, try to kind of normalize the speaker information uh, or try to even try to, not fully, but try to suppress some noisy information. Uh, the, however, it turns out that the male filter bank is actually also very good for speaker recognition as well. <laughs> So uh, the, the, there are some intentions to make our feature to be uh, the, like uh, the, what we want, but it turns out that the male filter bank uh, is actually not doing what we want. My feeling is that my kind of experience is that male filter bank is a very good way to emphasize the, how to say, the better representation and also actually doesn't lose so much information. So later, uh, the, the modeling part uh, can actually performing the, uh, the more uh, the, the discriminative task like a speech recognition and speaker recognition. That is the most use case. Um, I kind of prepared such kind of question, uh, the question and answers, but if you guys have some questions, I'd like to accept now. Yes, emotion recognition and so on, but it is also still speech side, right? Um, Mary tell, maybe not, but some, how to say, uh, the power, uh, that uh, log power spectrum and the emphasizing the uh, lower frequency, uh, the, the information is actually used in the other uh, the signal uh, processing. Uh, for example, my friend, uh, the, he works, uh, well, he's still working on the speech and audio processing, but applying this same uh, technique. But of course, you know, uh, this can be different in, depending on the, our kind of application. But he uh, applied this kind of technique to the uh, driver uh, signals, like a uh, canvas data or some other uh, the, uh, the, uh, driver uh, the, the signal information. And actually some of the techniques are quite useful, but it's not exactly male because you know, male, all the parameters are kind of uh, the, the decided for our, uh, the human perception and sampling rate and so on is also very different. So uh, the, the, uh, the range of the, uh, the information is different, but the something similar techniques are used for the other signal processes, yes. Yes, yes. Safely use it. Okay, I will go through the other uh, the, uh, feature extraction uh, the topic uh, quickly. Um, one is the delta feature and the other is mean normalization. So delta feature is actually uh, the quite effective ways to uh, get the information of the context. 
So I will explain in the, uh, the following weeks. Uh, anyway, uh, original speech recognition is modeled by the Gaussian. Gaussian actually doesn't have a very good power to model the features that have a strong correlation. And you can see that, for example, some features and the neighboring features, if we concatenate it, it can be a very good information to get the context, right? But features are quite largely correlated. In this case, actually, Gaussian mixture is not good at handling it. So before deep neural network is uh, becomes popular, people actually are uh, solving these ways uh, the to uh, the, uh, the very simple ways to solve this problem. Instead of using, for example, uh, the, uh, the concatenating all the feature, we also consider to use the delta, a kind of a, uh, the velocity, something similar to the velocity, or even we actually taking the another delta, which is similar to the acceleration. This turns out to be having a good speech information and also doesn't have a so much correlation to the original feature. So people using this uh, delta uh, based techniques a lot uh, in the, uh, the, the uh, Gaussian mixture error, but uh, it is not so much used for the current uh, deep neural network, since deep neural net network can uh, consider uh, the, the, the feature correlation well. The next uh, the, the technique is called mean normalization. Well, mean normalization itself is very famous technique for machine learning, right? People just call it whitening or uh, whatever, right? But it actually has a meaning in the speech cases. Um, the our kind, kind of mean normalization is actually uh, the, uh, the making, uh, removing some uh, convolutional distortion. So uh, if we have some kind of a different room, or if we have a different, uh, the, for example, uh, the, the uh, vocal tracks, which, for example, uh, the male and female speakers uh, sound different. Uh, the male speaker is uh, lower frequency. Uh, the, the female speaker is higher frequency, right? This is because vocal tract is different. And this kind of a difference, uh, of course, we want to eliminate. Uh, the two, uh, the just recognizing the speech information, uh, the, the linguistic information. Uh, in this case, uh, this uh, the, the vocal tract or uh, the uh, impulse response information is actually represented as a convolution in the time domain. And then uh, the, uh, the if uh, we using a short-term Fourier transform, this convolution operation becomes a multiplication. So that again, target is we want to remove this information and we want to kind of only get this information. And then by actually uh, the, um, substituting this information to this other, uh, the uh, uh, mean normalization operation, I kind of have some mass, but I can skip the derivation. And I just give you the uh, final result. This is the final result after the mean normalization. Actually, a multiplicative component of, of this, uh, the, uh, the filter is removed by using this uh, mean operation. And actually internally, it has a log. So this is actually key component to removing this kind of information. So this uh, the, the normalization is uh, the widely used uh, for uh, speech uh, processing. And the, this uh, the convolution, uh, the distortion, again, uh, can be comes from the vocal tract or room impulse response or even channel distortion we call. For example, if using a different microphone, it has a different characteristics, which can also be represented as like this kind of function. And we can actually remove uh, this kind of uh, uh, the, the, the variation. So if we don't remove the, this variation, what's happened? When I, for example, uh, train the model with this microphone and moving to the other, uh, like for example, smartphone the microphone, the uh, channel characteristic is different and it cannot be working. But by using this operation, we can normalize this information and we, we, it can be well uh, recognized. 
Okay, so the last uh, the topic is that the uh, uh, log mail filter bank transformation uh, sounds a little bit complicated, but actually it is differentiable. STFT is a linear transformation. Remember that original uh, signal is uh, the, the multiplied by the window function and the periodic function, just a linear transformation, right? And the power is also uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the standard operation. Mel uh, is also at uh, the matrix multiplication. Triangle pattern, so one, please ignore that. But we actually can ignore that. Uh, once uh, we get the Mel matrix, this is just a matrix multiplication. And they finally taking the log. So the, all of these operations are actually at a quite simple uh, fundamental operation. And we can write it in the PyTorch. So this means that we can actually get the derivatives through that. So one of our other uh, groups uh, that uh, approach is actually we combine the speech enhancement, uh, which is performing in the waveform domain, and then performing the feature extraction, log mail filter bank, and we combine the speech recognition, and all are differentiable. So we actually get the back propagation to optimize both speech enhancement and the speech recognition. That is actually uh, the, our group is often using as our kind of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, technique. So, okay, so the, let me uh, the summarize uh, today's uh, the, the lecture. So uh, the feature extraction, I mostly ex explained about the log mail filter bank uh, feature. And as I mentioned, the log mail filter bank is based on the signal processing and the perceptual uh, the, the processing, uh, the combination uh, of them, of that. And I skip some of the information or I kind of explain quickly, but actually this, uh, the, the, uh, the, low, uh, the, the feature extraction is actually changing. Originally it is designed for the Gaussian based model, Gaussian mixture based model. So that the delta feature uh, and some other uh, components are used to be very important. Uh, but if we using deep learning uh, based approaches, it's not important uh, anymore. And the, uh, the, uh, the, there is a question that, the, that you mentioned, uh, asked the logomer filter bank is widely used. Almost all speech or even some audio processing or music processing, some people are using the logomer filter bank. However, the, uh, the, the one of the issue is that logomer filter bank is uh, the, the complicated. It's not easy to understand. So people actually try to replace it free end to end uh, from waveform to uh, directly uh, predicting the uh, text uh, and so on. And there are a lot of studies about it. Uh, try to replace this uh, the log mail filter bank with uh, the one dimensional CNN. And actually there are some improvement, but uh, it is not fully really replaced yet. The reason is because as I mentioned, feature extraction also requires a lot of other aspects like a computational cost, online streaming perspective, uh, the, the compatibility and so on. Uh, due to that, uh, the, some people actually prefer to use the, uh, the uh, learnable uh, feature extraction. But in general, many people are still using a log mail filter. Okay, so that's the, uh, the uh, uh, end of this, uh, today's uh, the lecture. And I will move to the uh, explanation of the uh, weekly assignment.